This is a Tesla Cybertruck, and this is a Centurion RI245. We're gonna see how the Tesla Cybertruck does pulling a wake boat. Oh yeah, dude, that pulls it out super nice, no question. This is my first time in or driving a Tesla Cybertruck, but I'm not new to towing boats. I've towed hundreds of boats, probably thousands of times. I've hauled with many different trucks and SUVs, half tons, three quarter tons, one tons, and yes, I've towed with a diesel. I love diesels. One time I even towed with a minivan. All of that to say, I will be giving my honest first time reactions to this Tesla Cybertruck and comparing that to all of my other boat towing experiences. Let's get the boat hooked up. This this is a Foundation Series Tesla Cybertruck. It has the dual motors, 11,000 pound towing capacity, almost 600 horsepower, and 525 pound feet of torque. I need to thank my friend Brad for allowing me to use his Cybertruck, and for Century Marine for letting me use this 2024 Centurion RI245. Set up this way, it's roughly 8,000 pounds. We ran into a little bit of a uh, problem here with the Cybertruck. We were wanting to use this adjustable hitch by B&W um, where we could put it in here and then be able to have a riser hitch off of that for this boat. But we can't actually hook in this hitch with the pin here where the pinhole is and the bumper because it knocks the bumper. So this hitch, the adjustable hitches won't work. They'll have to have an extension or something else will have to happen to make this work. The other thing with this riser hitch here, it's like crazy sloppy. Um, so I have a couple fixes that we might do to make it a little less sloppy, but that's a couple things right now that aren't super great. So these are just a little, some sleeves that go on there that will butt up against this to make it so that it will take away some of that sloppiness. Still sloppy, just not as sloppy as what it was before. This really is the first time driving the Cybertruck, so it might be a little rocky, but you can either learn from me or laugh at me. Hey Brad, yes, sir. how do I put it in drive in reverse? I thought I knew, but I don't know. No problem, man, no problem. So, you're put foot on pedal, or yeah. the brake? That's forward. Oh, it didn't give me that because your phone, I don't think, was oh, close okay. enough. Here, throw this in there. Just try that all right okay here we go the nerves of driving over a hundred thousand dollar tesla cybertruck for the first time i wanted to make sure that i didn't wreck it right in front of its owner also the four wheel steering takes a little to get used to the cameras were nice but it was difficult to judge how much i should trust them and how accurate they are when trying to hook up a trailer turns out pretty accurate. So now we're in park and you can feel the four-way steering too. You might be able to see it from the, you can see it on the screen right here, but you can also might be able to see it from the camera back there. So we're in park. It'll, it'll slide on. Okay. Yeah. It'll slide on now. It is different. Isn't it? Yeah. It's definitely different. So here's the electrical connection for the trailer. This particular boat trailer and boat has this Hydrostar electric hydraulic over brakes. So it means it's electric brakes, this forward of this point, And then from here, it's all hydraulic brakes after that. A standard thing that, typic, uh, standard thing that typically comes on, on all trailers is surge brakes, at least for boats. It's really got super popular in the last couple years for electric over hydraulic brakes. So it'll hook up to the truck. The truck actually has a brake module inside that'll work really well with it. And as I connect this, the truck will recognize it. Yep, right here we get this pop-up screen right when you plug the trailer in and the trailer brake gain is right here. You can adjust it. You can go to the boost, hold brake. Right there. You can also adjust 
Man, why well, won't it adjust, dude? I can't. It won't like any of the stuff won't change. So click, click the uh, that. Uh huh. And then hit uh, towing, hauling. Okay, okay. There we go. Now try it. I thought we were able to do it here. Yeah. Nope, we can't do it here. Okay, so you can come into the tow and hauling section, and there we can adjust this brake gain. This is how powerful it is going to put there. The Drake uh, trailer brake boost is going to be how quickly it throws that power to the trailer to help you stop. Trailer mode. Perfect. Okay. Ride heights at medium. We can adjust that if we need to. Okay. Should be good. For this first test, we are going to see how the truck does on the ramp, both backing down the boat and pulling it out. So the super awesome thing about this boat is that the tower can go down with just a press of a button. And it can be towed behind the boat with the tower all the way down. And that's what we're gonna do. It'll save us on some aerodynamics. And also it just looks really, really cool. So that's where the tower is gonna stay for the duration of this pole. So here we go. Backing down the trailer the first time. I want all three cameras on so I can see around it. And I do like my windows down. The mirrors are not super great. Later, man. So it might be a little tricky. Reverse, here we go. Yeah, it is goofy not having my mirrors. I love having my mirrors, but I guess I have videos. So I can check here. And I do have trailer braking power because the electric over hydraulic brakes. Man, I do not like how those mirrors go down. I'm so used to just looking at the mirrors. That's that awful and uncomfortable spot to be in. See if I can actually back down the ramp straight here. That turns way quicker than I expected. So here we go, pulling it out. It's already brake assist when I'm going. So I've taken off the, my foot off the gas. Oh yeah. No slippage in any of the tires. Dude, that pulls it out super nice. No question. Oh baby. Yeah. No, that's super good. The mirrors are definitely something I do not like while towing and driving, man. But I guess if I have this, then that should be pretty sufficient. For good measure, we're going to do it a second time to see if we can make some adjustments to allow our experience to be a little better based off the things we learned. You definitely get used to it. It's like, it's just different. It's a learning curve. Yeah, it's different, but once you get it, then you, you get it, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Do you want do you want the uh, 
Kind of open. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, can you? Oh, yeah, perfect. So much better with mirrors up. How's that? So, once you change that setting, tunnel. auto tilt, we undid oh. the auto tilt. Way better. And we Way better. The tunnel cover is open. Okay. Oh, yeah. I normally back down like pretty fast, but this I'm definitely doing a little bit slower. The mirrors actually aren't too bad as soon as you don't auto tilt them. I think they're pretty good. And the trailer is definitely super responsive in reverse. Pretty good. Here we go, pulling it out of the water. It's the second test. Let's see how it does. Little slip slippage just on those wood pieces there, but other than that, nothing. And we can actually start going pretty good up. Yeah. The glare is weird. It takes away my mirror here. Yeah. All right. We're just gonna drive it here for a bit and see what it's like. This is just through the marina. This is the first time that I've towed with this Tesla Cybertruck, so I'm gonna to try to give you my just real life reaction to it, what I think, if it's good, if it's bad. It already got me one little time here. I got a cut right here. I hit it on the nose or on the front there. It got me, so. Yeah, that Cybertruck's <laughs> tough, man. <laughs> it is tough. Does the tunnel, having the tunnel open, does that help? It honestly make I can't. It doesn't make a huge difference to me. And the the rear view mirror, I don't even know where it's actually pointing at. <laughs> and it's really hard to see anything over there. It's more for looks. Than yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely can tell that the truck has something attached to it. Um, there are some. It is a pretty heavy truck. There are some heavier trucks that I've been on that. It almost feels like a trailer isn't attached, so you can definitely feel that a trailer's here. Right here, I didn't even have to brake. I just let my foot off the gas and the regen braking did exactly what it needed to. Oh, that's the tunnel cover. The tunnel. I was like... Yeah, close the tunnel. Since that rear view mirror is just for looks. Yeah. I keep wanting to just like look at my mirrors because I always look at my mirrors. Can we adjust the mirrors a little bit? How do we yeah. adjust the mirrors? Go in here to mirrors, and then I'm going to start with the left. Yeah, I just wanted to go up a little bit. Toggle on your on, your on left. this. Yep. So you can adjust your left one. Oh, there we go. Okay, down a little bit. There we go. That's okay, what I want. Okay, and right. You can okay. Do something. All right, there. Now that's much better. That's more natural to where I look. I can kind of see the wheels in this side but I can at least see the upright on the on the truck it definitely feels like it has gobs of power like there's no struggle on the power at all which is pretty sweet four-wheel steering is just goofy Yeah, it gets up there pretty good. Yeah. Like you're in, you are in comfort mode. Okay. So we can go to sport or custom. And right now, acceleration is chill. So we can yeah. get some more pickup if you want it. I don't necessarily want to do a lot of pickup, especially with a trailer. But this is good. This is cool. Plenty. It's 
So the glare in the mirror is still super annoying to me here, but it's coming from the sun's coming this way, so it's right there. But once I turn a different direction, it would be better. But we're doing seven miles an hour right now. Easy. And then show me where we're at on like range and stuff. Yes. So range right now, 204 let's, miles. And let's see what our like our power usage or something. Can we go to this? Does it have that screen? Charging. There we are. Okay. And we've been doing stuff for a little bit. We started it at like 80% ish. Oh, here we are. Yeah. 11.6% consumed. From a from a suspension standpoint, you can still feel you can feel the trailers behind you, right? It's not that crazy stiff suspension um, that I'm used to on like a three quarter ton truck. Coming to this stop sign, I haven't even hit the brakes yet. It's all regen, not even trailer brakes. Now our trailer brakes are engaged. Definitely get a few looks. Yeah, I. You definitely have to be a certain type of person to have a cyber truck. <laughs> I don't know anything about that one. I think you are a certain type of person, man. <laughs> I'm going to get on it here. Get up this hill. Make sure my camera doesn't break back there. Oh, how do I turn off the blinker now that I've turned it on? So when you change lanes, it will automatically kick off, or you push it again the second time. Oh, the second time. Off. Okay. So when you do make that lane change, it will automatically kick off. Yeah. There is some sound or noise you can hear right now, but it's the GoPro that I have right here. Yeah. So you can hear the wind going past the GoPro right there. Pretty smooth at 60 miles an hour. Yeah. This is it, just at freeway speed, or at highway speeds. We're on a highway right now. Feels pretty natural. If I needed to stop, trailer does good. Every, yeah, everything does good. I feel like I have a decent amount of control. I do that typically when I get in. If it's a new, new boat, a new truck, before I ever go long distances, I'll get out kind of on a test run and then I'll slam on the brakes. Just to test. Just to make sure that I know how everything's going to react if I do need to slam on the brakes. Because you don't want to, in the middle of, oh my gosh, I need to stop. For the that, that's the first time that you slam on the brakes, right? Smart. And I thought, I thought with how heavy the Tesla truck was, or is, that you wouldn't be able to feel the boat as much in the sense of it like moving it around a little bit but you can feel it move, move you around a little bit. Um, that's just, that's just, just what it is. I think some of it's from the air ride, or the, the air ride suspension that it has. Um, Suspension's not as stiff as like... Uh, as a three quarter ton, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the boat and what we're towing. So this is a Centurion RI245. This is on a triple axle trailer. Um, off of the website, it's roughly like 71, 7,200 pounds. That's with a double axle trailer, not a triple axle trailer. So with a triple axle trailer, it'll add a little bit of weight. This also has the Predator power tower on it, which is a tower that the Bimini top stays level as it goes up and down, which adds weight to the boat. It's a much heavier tower. So we're roughly 8,000 pounds what we're towing right now with this Centurion RI 245. 8,000 pounds, which is roughly four tons. 8,000 pounds that we're towing. It feels super natural. This is highway speeds we're doing ish probably shouldn't let you know what the speed limit is right here it didn't feel like I was going too fast though and it's a unique look with a unique truck that's pu pulling it right the uh, the army green and the uh, oh yeah black. Yep. yeah and it goes with the matte black wrap that you have on this Tesla cyber truck I do have to say thank you to Brad he's my friend uh, for letting me use his truck test this truck out see what it's like we're now going to go on freeway. We're going to go on the 303 here in Arizona. Everybody wants to know, is this a truck and can it tow? Can it tow? So pedal all the way to the floor, 
we're doing 60, yep. 65. And we can adjust it too, so it's more of a sport mode. See, we're just we're just chill right now, and you're doing 80. We gotta get in front of this person. We're good now. Good. So how and was we got that our mirrors doing four tons. That was good. That was good. Oh, sorry, I put my blinker on again. One other thing I wanted to say about the trailer is it has electric over hydraulic brakes, which mesh really well with this truck. It already has a brake controller in the truck. Uh, and so we can turn it up. I can actually let off right now and I can hold the trailer brakes. The trailer's actually slowing us down now. So that works pretty good. It's pretty awesome. We are on the freeway now. And what about, so we're 8,000 pounds. Mark. Yeah. What about a weight distribution hitch? Is that needed? Oh, good question. So on all the other manufacturers, um, they specify that you have to have a weight distribution hitch. That's for the uh, Ford Lightning F-150. Um, and even for the regular F-150s, this is for uh, Toyota Tundra, which I normally tow with. All, most of the manufacturers, I can't say all, but most of the manufacturers within their owner's manual will say that you have to have a weight distribution hitch for over 5,000 pounds. Uh, when I dug through Tesla's owner's manual, there was no mention of that. Um, I would say it's probably a good idea to use a weight distribution hitch if, if it's over 5,000 pounds. But we don't have one right now. We don't have one right now, and it's not specified in um, in the owner's manual on this cyber truck that you need one. I'm just going to see if I can pass these people. Oh, pass them with these. Wow, that was up a hill too. So now we're going to get off of the freeway. So you just took it on the freeway there. Yeah. Like, how did the power and torque feel at freeway speeds? Okay, so torque and power felt very much like a three quarter ton diesel engine. Okay. Tons of power, tons of torque to get you around whatever you wanted to. Like right there, up a hill, I went around two cars, super easy, pulling 8,000 pounds. I still haven't hit the brakes yet. Now I'm gonna hit the brakes. You like that regen? Trailer engaged, yep, regen's nice. I do, I'm gonna add a little bit more. Six and a half is probably where I'm gonna go to. So we're just gonna be as if we're like going to a neighborhood. We're going, just pulling the boat here. And you can feel it move the truck. I've said that a couple times. You can definitely feel it move the truck. Um, but it's not anything, it's definitely not more than a half ton truck is. Yeah, the, uh, the cyber truck with the Centurion RI245 definitely get a lot of looks a lot of cameras and a lot of honks. Huh? We already did get a lot of looks, yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit trippy coming in here with that four-way steering. Oh, and I need to just pay attention to my here instead of my mirrors. I'm so used to my mirrors. Looking at your mirrors instead yeah. of the screen? But the screen's actually nice. It's nicer than what I thought it was going to be. When I originally thought, I was like, man, there's no way that the, the the cameras are going to do as good of a job that mirrors do. I do wish that it had maybe like towing mirrors, which I know are not attractive, like but they're a little bit wider out and then they're actually bigger, right? So you can see kind of around. That was one thing at the boat ramp that I really wished is that I would be able to see kind of around the boat. I can't see around the boat. If I have mirrors, it kind of does bend around a little bit around the boat. A few blind spots when you're backing up. Yeah. <coughs> it was a little bit to get used to. Once I got used to it, it was really nice. This is just very natural from a truck and driving standpoint. It is a little goofy with the four wheel steering, but once you get used to it, it's, I'm, it's not like a weird learning curve that I, I would run over a curb with or anything like that. It's, it's just very, anyone that's driven a truck before could hop in this and be fine dry, pulling something. So a real life thing that almost anyone down here in Phoenix that owns a boat would want to do is go to Lake Powell. Let's see what the truck tells us about going to Lake Powell if it's possible. Can we make it to Powell? Yep. So how do we do this? So we're gonna to go to our navigation and it's usually an icon here, I don't see it, so we're gonna open this up. Okay. We're gonna to go to our navigation and we're gonna type in Lake Powell. Might as well save this as a, uh, a favorite, right Blake? Yeah. Okay, here's Lake Powell. We're gonna do destination from here. Okay, so it tells us the charging places that we need to charge. Right now we're at, where are we at right now? 48%, 48%. we're at 50% charge. It tells us that we need to stop in New River and then Cordes Lakes and then Flagstaff. Flagstaff and then Page. And then here, it'll tell us right here. 
So they'll tell us at New River, we should be at 35%. We're only gonna charge for 5% to get to Cordes Lakes. Uh, we'll be at 10% when we get there. Um, and then we'll get to Flagstaff with 12% and 11% to Lake Powell. So the truck itself is evaluating the, the load, the battery, everything, and saying that we could make it to Lake Powell. That if we left right now, which is 430, that we could get there by 1020. So with my Tundra, I would have to stop in Flagstaff for sure. For fuel. Yeah, that's that's a that's a definite stop that I'd have to take. My internet's slow, so it's not getting me there. I was curious what it was going to actually be. Hey, while we're waiting for Oh, here we go. I got some fun, ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't go through. So I just look up page again, it's four hours and 18 <coughs> minutes. So this one, you get to page at 1018. This one get to page around nine o'clock. So it's adding roughly an hour and 10, or hour and 20 minutes. Actually, this one says 850. So hour and 30 minutes you would add to your trip to Lake Powell using the Tesla Cybertruck. The one thing to note too is you have multiple um, mountain passes that you have to go through in order to get to Flagstaff. So that honestly has me a little bit hesitant on the fact that we would show up at Flagstaff with 12%. 12% or even Cordes Lake with 10% or Page with 13. Cause I've driven that route and I know that there are some elevation changes you're gonna use and you're gonna power. use more power, right? So that makes me concerned if it's even possible to do. Let's verify this against Google Maps. Here's our trip from up by our houses in Peoria, Arizona, going to New River and then going to Cordes Lakes and then going to Flagstaff and then ending up in Page. Let's check out some of the details. The entire trip itself is gonna be 263 miles. Breaking it down by each section though, 17 miles to get to New River, then 30 miles to get to Cordes Lakes, then 78 miles to get to Flagstaff. But this last one is 137 miles. That's the one that I struggle with. Can the Tesla Cybertruck make it 137 miles while towing a boat? Jason with Engineering Explained does a great job at breaking down why this distance is a problem. I don't think electric trucks are there yet. It might be more feasible to have something like Edison Motors Diesel Electric to have the range, torque, and power. It's definitely something that I want to check and try and see if we could actually make that work. So. If you have a question, if we can actually make it Lake Powell, put it down in the comments and maybe we'll even test it. Let us know if we get enough comments, we'll go test it. And there you have it, the Tesla Cybertruck towing a wake boat. I was surprised by how well I liked the Tesla Cybertruck. If you wanna see another wake surfing education video, tap or click the screen right here. Remember, shine bright, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.